This research has had considerable impact, bringing a disease that almost no one had heard of and for which very few patients were treated to the attention of the Ethiopian government, such that it is now one of eight neglected tropical diseases prioritised and the government have ambitions to treat the more than a million patients affected. If this continues at global level, there's a real chance that podoconiosis can be eliminated within our lifetimes. Podoconiosis is one of the less known types of leg swelling that's common in tropical areas. It's not caused by any bacterium or parasite or virus. Instead, it seems to be an unusual reaction to mineral triggers in volcanic soils found in those areas. So podoconiosis um, is a disease of some of the most voiceless people in the world, subsistence farmers who can't afford either shoes or even water to wash their feet. It starts off really as slight swelling of the foot which then progresses up the leg and becomes very, very disfiguring in its later stages. Podoconiosis causes huge impact within Ethiopia and also within about another 10 tropical African countries. Within Ethiopia, it seems like about 1 million people are affected and a further 18 million are at risk of contracting the disease. And what does it mean to an individual to get this terrible condition? Well, it means that they can't farm their fields effectively anymore. They may be pushed out of school. They can't care for their children so effectively. And they can't join in many of the important social activities in the community. Now, of course, there is an economic impact as well, and this is best measured within Ethiopia. Podoconiosis costs at least $200 million per year. I think one of the great things about the research so far is that a lot of it has benefited patients almost immediately because we have a very strong public health emphasis within the research. Uh, that's not to say that we don't uh, involve other disciplines too. Um, we've needed to um, bring in expertise from genetics, from ethics, from law, from biochemistry, and now from mineralogy and geology, and I'm sure that list will continue expanding. There are three major projects that have gone on recently with uh, almost immediate impact. The first of those was nationwide mapping of podoconiosis, and the results uh, once they're with the Ministry of Health, will lead almost directly to action, to training of health workers in the affected districts, and then to provision of the supplies needed for treatment of patients. There's a major trial going on in northern Ethiopia among 700 patients, testing out whether the very simple intervention, that means foot washing, using bandages, socks and shoes, is genuinely effective in improving the state of the patient's legs and their experience of disease. They will help guide development of um, na national guidelines, not just in Ethiopia, but in other podoconiosis endemic countries too. In southern Ethiopia, there's a trial going on on the impact of community messaging in altering communities' behaviours in re reference to preventing the disease. We've developed a package including posters and a song and household-based training. And now we're testing whether it works in real life. Does it alter communities' ability to prevent the disease? Central to all this research has been a focus on developing endemic country scientists so that they can become the leaders of podoconiosis research in the future. And we now have a number of PhD students registered at Brighton and Sussex Medical School and other research fellows working in endemic countries. Some of these are supported by the new Wellcome Trust Global Health Research Centre, which has exactly the same aim. This research has had considerable impact. The Ethiopian government have ambitions to treat the more than a million patients affected within the country. If that carries on at global level, there's a real chance that the disease can be eliminated within our lifetimes.